great. So it's lovely to have everybody here for my Taste of Trust uh, introductory training, which primarily is going to be about the seven habits that we have to give up and the three steps that we must take if we want to let go of fear and move towards living in unconditional trust, which is completely possible with the right strategies and patience and time to learn how to do so. And there will be more than this, but this was essentially what I wanted to convey. But there will be a lot of foundation for underpinning um, these seven habits and three steps. And <clears throat> we will also cover things like the signs and symptoms of trust and lack of trust, because often we can think we trust, but then when you cross check against signs and symptoms of lack of trust, then you start to recognize, well, actually, maybe I don't trust as much as I thought I did. And the thing with personal development and consciousness is that often we're not aware of what we're not aware of. So a lot of what I do is help people to become more aware of what they were previously aware of. Sorry, I'm just uh, got another computer open here. I just need to do something on that. Uh, and then at the end, there's an invitation, if you wish, to, to take this, this learning to a deeper level. So this is part one of what I'm calling the trust series, and it's a taste of trust. Steps to letting go of fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt for good. And there's a double meaning there in for good. It's like for good because it's going to make your life better, but also for good because it's like forever. And what I want to do is I want to make this both an experiential and an intellectual learning experience, which means you're going to be using your head, your heart, and your gut, which are the three brains or in Taoist terminology, we call the three Dantians. Because a lot of us, we've been taught in school to, to learn with our head, but we haven't been taught how to learn with our heart and our gut. And whenever you see this blue slide, it's, it's an indication that I'm going to be asking you questions to go inside you and ask yourself questions so that you get some insights that maybe you, you wouldn't have if you didn't go inside and ask those questions. And my goal is by the end of this seminar that I hope that you'll have a new understanding and perspective on trust at an experiential and intellectual level. And I recommend that you listen with your heart, not just your mind. And I also recommend that you resist the impulse to take screeds of notes. You can do that later when you watch the recording. But for this first time through, I recommend that you just be, be in the moment and listen with your full being and with your heart. And for the replay, there are various places where, where you'll be able to catch the replay. It'll be on the Trust Series page. And then it will also be made into a little mini course in my on-demand courses. And then there will probably be parts of it on YouTube and also podcast made into podcast on iTunes. So what is trust? And what does trust mean to you? Just stop for a moment and ask yourself this question. What is trust? Because everybody is going to have their own version and definition of what trust means. And that will be a direct result of every little thing that has happened to them since the moment they were born. We will all have our own definition. And what difference does experiencing or feeling trust make in your life? So when you're in a state of trusting, and do you even know what that really feels like, or what does it feel like to you? What difference does that make 
in your life, in your day-to-day -day life. Just ponder on that for a moment. And sometimes I find it's useful to close one's eyes when one is pondering on questions like this because we bring our senses inwards and we're not distracted by the outer world. And when you trust, how do you think and feel inside? In other words, what are the types of thoughts that you think when you're in a trusting state? And what sensations or emotions do you feel energetically inside you when you trust? And the reason for asking this is because the answer to this will be very different compared to when you're not in trust, when you're in the opposite of trust, which we're going to come to in a moment. But just take note of how do you think and feel when you experience trust and take note of that. And when you are in a state of trust, how do you tend to act and behave out in your life? How do you act and behave differently compared to when you're not in a state of trust? Have you thought about this? Have you taken note? Do you know the difference? And in general, then, with your whole experience of life, when you're trusting, what is the difference between living in trust and not? How does your life turn up differently? How do people turn up differently? How does your work turn up differently? You can always come back to these questions later. We're not going to spend too much time pondering on them now, but it's just to get the cogs going, as in the picture. And then if you ask yourself, well, when you don't trust, when you're not in a state of trust, what is your experience of life? So if we look at the dictionary term of trust, it says a firm belief in the re reliability, truth or ability of someone or something, and as a verb to believe in the re reliability, truth or ability of, which is a very dry definition really. <laughs> um, and really trust is much, much more than this when we start to explore it. And this is just one definition of trust. There, there could be many, but I'm going to go through this in detail. Trust is an innate essential quality of the heart, which can and needs to be cultivated and grown in order to create a personal first-hand experience of inner harmony and safety, leading to authentic well-being, optimal health, growth, and life satisfaction. So I'm going to go through this bit by bit because there's a lot in here. So the first thing to pull out is innate. Trust is an innate essential quality. So what does that mean, innate? It means it's built in. It's part of us. It's not something that we have to go and find, although we may have to go and refind it, but it's actually part of us and it's a natural part of us. The next word, essential. Trust is an essential quality of the heart. Why is it essential? Well, it's essential if we want everything that's listed at the end of the sentence. If we want authentic well being, optimal health, growth, and life satisfaction, then we must have trust. And without trust, we can't have those things. And a quality, it's a quality of the heart. So it's not a quality of, you know, your big toe, although there may be trust in there as well, 
although that, that might sound a bit silly. Um, but, and I just need to, so the next um, thing, trust can and needs to be cultivated and grown. So even though we have this innate quality of trust, it actually has to be grown and cultivated just like we cultivate the, you know, the, 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 the veggie, veggies in our veggie patch or, or the flowers in our garden. Um, you know, yes, they can grow by themselves, but if we tend to them and we give them attention and we give them uh, fertilizer and water and, and love especially, then they grow much better. and experience in a harmony. And harmony is a natural state of inner peace, which we are, if we train ourselves, able to maintain no matter what is going on in our life. So if you think of your life, how often do you get knocked off what I call your harmony perch? Uh, you know, how often do you get knocked off and get go into negative emotions or stress or fear? because our job is to cultivate more and more the ability to maintain an inner state of harmony no matter what is going on. And then the next thing, safety, and this is obviously a big one. If we want to feel safe, we're going to have to trust, and I'm gonna be talking more about that uh, in a moment, um, but this is, this is a big, issue and a lot of people don't feel safe and they don't even really realize uh, that they don't feel safe because they're so stuck in stress and fear. And, but when we do experience authentic trust, then we're going to experience authentic well-being because the trust is an inner experience which leads to an inner experience of well-being which has nothing to do with anything external. It's just an internal experience which pervades our whole being. And trust also has a huge impact on our health, our physical, mental health. And our growth, our personal growth, if we're interested in growing ourselves and improving ourselves and changing ourselves, then we must cultivate trust. And ultimately, if we want life satisfaction, then we must cultivate trust. So if you were to currently rate your levels of trust overall, you know, one to 10, zero to 10, and I'm gonna be going more in depth in a minute and breaking it down, but just to start with as a, as a general rating, what are your current levels of trust as far as you think right now? How would you rate your trust? And the interesting thing was this topic of trust wasn't even on my radar until about 30 years ago when I was doing quite a quite in-depth personal training uh, series of um, personal trainings, not, not teaching them like learning for me. And this trainer who I'd never met, she just arrived from Australia, uh, new to the group and she, she, jumped off the plane came into the seminar room and she went she lined us all up like in an army drill sergeant sort of <laughs> way and she she'd never met any of us but she obviously had very strong intuition and she went and stood in front of each one of us one by one and she said something to that person which was totally accurate and very insightful just through you know her intuition her sixth sense whatever and she came and stood in front of me and she said, how are you with trust? And I was really quite surprised, uh, but it made me think. I, I went away and I was like, whoa, nobody's ever asked me that question before. And I never really thought I had an issue with trust before, but maybe because she's actually brought it up, maybe it's something I need to think about. Now that was 30 years ago, but it wasn't really, now I look back until a few years ago, when I started learning uh, various techniques um, that went into trust in depth, that I started to really, really explore 
trust. So the way I like to break it down to make it simple is that we could say that there are four levels of trust. The first one is self-trust, trusting ourself. So that's trusting our decisions, trusting our thoughts, trusting our feelings, which is a big one. A lot of people have trained themselves not to trust their feelings and that causes a lot of problems, which is why I do my work in teaching people how to heal themselves from physical illness through managing their feelings, which they've been ignoring up until now. So do you trust your feelings? Do you trust your beliefs? Do you even know what your beliefs are? Do you trust your actions? Do you trust your dreams and goals? There are many, many things, there's more than this, but these are just a few of the things that relate to self-trust. Now, if we don't have self-trust, then we're gonna have some of these things. We're gonna have things like a lack of confidence, suspicion, we might be oversensitive, we might go on emo emotional roller coasters, we might worry or have anxiety or feel isolated and lonely or be closed and negative. So these are some of the signs that we, we start asking ourselves, do I experience any of this? Because if I do, it's a sign that I'm not experiencing as much trust as I could. Other signs could be self-doubt, lack of self-belief, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, low self-worth, nervousness, shyness, difficulty following our dreams or achieving our goals, which then leads to frustration, and then maybe even depression and anxiety and more pessimism. The second le level of trust is trusting others. Do we trust others' decisions and thoughts and their feelings and their beliefs and their actions? their dreams, their goals? How much do we trust other people? And if you think in your life of the people around you in your life, it could be children, it could be parents, partner, grandparents, work colleagues, bosses. How much do you trust people in your life? And signs of lack of trust in others could include things like feeling nervous around people, shy, low self-confidence, suspicious, doubt, fear, negative thinking, closed-mindedness, closed-hearted, having boundaries and feeling the need to protect oneself or feeling a sense of disconnection and loneliness and therefore unhappiness. The third level of trust is in life. We could say anything external to us and, and anything that is happening and trusting that whatever happens we're safe in other words not you know either trusting or not trusting that we're safe in the world and signs of lack of trust in life could be for example worrying fear about the future apprehension worst case scenario thinking always expecting the worst pessimism, doubt, anxiety, maybe even illness. And the fourth level of trusting is in what I refer to through my trainings as the true self, but this will be some higher aspect, whatever that is for you. Everybody has a different name for it. But trusting that you are being guided and looked after by something bigger than just you, the personality. And if we don't have that trust in this part of us, then we're going to feel a sense of disconnection. And actually often a lot of our sense of disconnection and loneliness and aloneness has to do, or loneliness has to do with disconnection from true self. Ultimately, that is what it is about. But most people don't see, see that initially. They just think that they're disconnected from other people. But actually the real disconnection is inside. And we're gonna feel things like dis dissatisfaction, worry, fear of the future, aloneness, loneliness, doubt, fear of life, fear of living, fear of dying. These are going to be the, the type of fears that we're going to have. So how would you rate your current levels of trust in these four areas? Your trust of yourself, your trust of others, 
your trust of life and your trust in your true self or your higher self. Just take a moment and ponder on that and give it a rating. Because the reason for taking the moment to actually do this is that you may be surprised. You may be surprised because it may be higher than you thought it was, or you may be surprised because it's a lower rating than you thought it was. But either way, it's good to have that self-awareness. And, and you can always come back and do this later if we don't have enough time as we go through now. So the question is, would you like to increase your levels of trust depending on whatever they came up as a rating? So we're going to go on to the next part and, and look at this next step. 